Hello, it's Real World Audio, and let's talk about a little bit more about the differences between inert cabinets and live cabinets, because uh, there were a lot of questions about it, and really I have not gotten into explaining in depth about it, because there's just so many aspects about uh, cabinet making. And uh, Ed Mato, he uh, had a few questions. One of them is that, uh, is there any proof that, that these live cabinets sound any good? And uh, uh, in response to that, uh, just uploaded that video uh, uh, with, with my speakers, playing some music, which I recorded a year ago. And uh, it was just unlisted on my uh, channel. And I just realized that I have something there that I, it wasn't published yet. It just got stuck. Not anymore. But that was about uh, a snapshot from a year ago. And, uh, and that's, that kind of gives an idea how music sounds through uh, live cabinets. Because uh, even through YouTube, even through low quality encoding, you still do get an idea what it sounds like. And uh, just as, uh, for example, if you use your cell phone to record people talking and to record the stereo system, the two will sound very different. Even if you have a very good stereo system, anyone can tell that uh, what, what that uh, little MP3, what that cell phone uh, snippet is, was it uh, a live person who was recorded or was it recorded music being recorded? And... Uh, what uh, what he noticed and what uh, I think about these things that when I record my live cabinets with, with a cell phone or with other recording gear, it sounds pretty much like live music. So it's like from the recording, uh, it's almost impossible to tell if whether it was a live sitar playing or did I record uh, a stereo playing back or was it a live piano playing or not. And uh, when, when I listen to like a perfectly made inert cabinets and people put the sound snippets on them, first second on, it's, it's very easy to tell that uh, it's, it's a stereo system being recorded. And, uh, and if, so, if there's a question, they're not telling you what, what are we hearing. With 99% certainty, I can tell that it, it was a, a recording that was recorded. And uh, I think that's the biggest advantage of a live loudspeaker cabinet, that it sounds like uh, closer to live music uh, for a lot of different types of recordings, uh, which, which use very complex instruments. And I mean, under very complex instrument, I'm thinking about piano, I'm thinking about sitar, I'm thinking about uh, violin or double bass. So these instruments are complex because they have wooden tone and, and, and an omnidirectional radiation pattern plus the strings to them which have uh, more of a directivity to them and they, and, and they have very different uh, modes of wave propagation for the strings and for the body. And if you compare it against uh, like, let's say a saxophone or a trumpet, which is really a, a direct radiator, full on metallic instrument and, and there uh, to recreate the sound of those two instruments requires a very different approach to do it uh, with perfection compared to reproducing a violin to to make it sound as close to the real instrument as possible and and of course i received a lot of comments and on on the fact that uh, if you have a cabinet and you turn it into a live cabinet then it adds a lot of coloration to the sound and that's perfectly true you cannot turn an inert cabinet into a live cabinet by making it livelier. That's just messed up on every level. We cannot do that. So that's why for Ed, he also asked another question that uh, uh, Real World Audio, I listened to it with earphones and it sounds great. However, compared to what? Hope I'm not being rude, 
but extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence, as Carl Sagan said. And 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 Ed, I I I don't think that for we don't think for a second that you were being rude. Uh, your your comments were were totally valid, and and uh, and thank you for asking them, or or commenting. <laughs> uh, and and you are absolutely right uh, to uh, to be curious about it. Uh, and uh, for a live cabinet, the the we I mean the mode of operation is is so vastly different from an inert cabinet that the uh, design principle to uh, create a live cabinet is fundamentally different from an inert cabinet. So and that's why, uh, like uh, compared to what so. I, I, I cannot compare my live uh, cabinet and cannot build the same, uh, same version of it in an inert cabinet because the two are going to be absolutely different in every aspect. And why is that? That's because for a live cabinet, uh, what it does that it, it, it omnidirectionally propagates sound. So when we have an inert cabinet, there the design goal is that you have a cabinet and you have the driver on the front and, and the drivers propagate the sound to you and they have a dispersion pattern. So they, uh, both horizontally and vertically, they have a certain angle where they are able to optimally propagate the sound and that's why loudspeaker cabinet placement is so critical and, and the toe-in is so critical because you are uh, really adjusting whether you are in the optimal zone of that uh, of the dispersion pattern of 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 the path where the loudspeaker throws the sound at you, and for a live cabinet, what happens is that the drivers do the same thing that's in the front of the cabinet. They have their own dispersion pattern, but in addition to that, the cabinet omnidirectional every direction where you have those uh, thin uh, and supple surfaces, they radiate sound. And if it's a poorly made, a bad design of a life cabinet, which I don't consider a, a, a good life cabinet, or it is not, um, or it's not a high fidelity loudspeaker cabinet, then you have a lot of coloration and, and it's absolutely messed up because it, it has such a strong personality to it that no matter what music listen to it, it always comes out with the same colors. And that must might not be a bad thing uh, if you are uh, if you like those specific colorations you are getting, then it, it's lovely and, 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 and perfect. But if you if you want something to be like maybe perfectly flat or neutral, or you don't want to hear the same sauce added, no matter what music you listen to, then that becomes a, a big no-no for you, and we consider that not high fidelity because it's changing the EQ, is changing the sound to such a degree that it's uh, quite different than what was recorded, and. And when we have a properly designed live cabinet, this is not happening. Because into the design, we take into account that range of frequency where the cabinet is radiating. So a properly built live cabinet does not have peaks in certain narrow bands. A, live, a well designed live cabinet has a very wide band where it uh, transmits energy to the air, which extends over several octaves. And, and this has to be taken into account during the design of that loudspeaker cabinet. And, and when you take this into account, then the, the driver matching will be quite different compared to an inert solution. Your crossover will be very different. And also, there's a third thing that's going to be very different between an inert cabinet and a live cabinet, and that's the weight and size. Because for an inert cabinet, the, the thin cabinet wall needs to be increased to a very thick cabinet wall. And that a thicker cabinet wall is going to take up much bigger space. 
than a live cabinet. Or if you want to squeeze it to the same space, make it just as big as your inert cabinet, then because of the walls are eating up your free air volume, eating up the lung space, then you will get a much smaller loudspeaker and that will fundamentally change the behavior of your loudspeaker. And so that's why it's not possible to convert an inert design to a live uh, cabinet because it requires the complete redesign of every aspect of that loudspeaker and, and you are getting fundamentally different loudspeakers. So for example, if I wanted to change my voice of Lancelot, so these big Altex speakers into inert speakers, then uh, because of that massive increase in size, I would be, I would require a much larger uh, cabinet to keep the same free air volume for my drivers and I would end up with massively heavier, massively bigger cabinets. So right now uh, they are uh, about uh, 180 pounds, 80 kilograms per cabinet and if I would turn them into inert loudspeakers they would be about uh, 600 pounds, 250, 300 kilograms per cabinet. And that's not something that I'm ever willing to do, uh, to have like uh, 600 kilograms of loudspeakers sitting in my room. There's no way to move those around or to do any tweaks on them. It's, it's just a nightmare to deal with that type of scenario. This 180 pounds, 80 kilos, that's roughly my own weight, I can handle them and, 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 and that's fine. That's pretty much uh, the, the top weight that I'm willing to work with. I don't want to uh, deal with anything heavier. Uh, and, but th that's one reason why I would did not go for an inert cabinet because if I want to do the inert cabinet properly, it will end up being an extremely heavy design and it would take much greater space from my living room as before. And there are additional aspects uh, that's going to have to change between an inert cabinet and a live cabinet. Uh, that's about the technicalities, but there's also uh, other aspects that inert cabinets sound radically different from live cabinets. And uh, I know most of you guys have experience uh, with, uh, with those live cabinets that are extremely colored. And, and sadly, in, uh, when, you, when you buy loudspeakers or they were made, uh, in the older days there were a lot of live cabinets and th which were improperly made. So, so they, they did not take into consideration the key factors you have to consider while making a live cabinet and that's because they were built as 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 uh, with, with just the technicality in mind and 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 the engineers did not think of music instruments uh, when they built the cabinets and then you are thinking that eh, i don't want to build my cabinet as a music instrument because it will add the colors of an instrument if it's built properly like a, a music instrument, it will not sound like a piano or a cello or anything because it doesn't have strings. You, are still, have, you still have drivers creating the sound. But what is the big lesson we learn from music instrument is the, the secret of the music instrument cabinets is that they can release energy extremely fast to the environment that's one thing, the, the release speed of the energy. And the number two is the wide frequency bandwidth over which they can release the energy. And, and the third consideration is that they can release this wide bandwidth without peaks within this frequency range. So that's why it is of utmost importance to look at music instruments because uh, music instruments naturally had to develop to have the highest efficiency of uh, vibration transfer to the air. Because uh, when you look at, for example, the uh, development of piano, 
the piano is developed by uh, by creating louder and louder sounds. So the earliest piano and and uh, cembalo, clavichord, whatnot, they they were much 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 more quieter, uh, like a couple hundred years ago, at their inception than than they are now. And that was one technology that they perfected, and we can as as audio engineers we can learn tremendous amount from that because they uh, they did not what those engineers did who fine tuned the piano and any other instrument they were basically applying laws of physics to find that material that has the fastest transfer speed over the widest frequency range because that's what's been happening to piano and every instrument that they also include uh, widened the uh, the bandwidth so we have lower octaves added to the piano over the ages and and also the ability to uh, to have uh, uh, just a, a very wide frequency range transmitted at uh, top energy levels and we can copy that into a loudspeaker as well and when you look, for example, at, at the perfectly built piano, when the pianist is going through the keyboard, there is no tonality change as, as he changes, goes through the keys and, and through the octaves. It, it sounds like a uniform piano. So it's not adding peaks and valleys, and it's not adding different colorations to each part of the spectrum. And the same is true for a violin or, or, or a double bass. They do not have these monstrous peaks and valleys. And when you apply that technology for, for, uh, for loudspeakers, then you will have a, also a uniform behavior, but you have to know the rules, how to apply it. You have to look at the instrument manufacturers, the luthiers, how they worked, and, and how was a pianist be able to uh, create a piano uh, or, or when you look at the violin and the double bass what's the difference between them uh, and I, I'm going to go into this in, in great detail over in the future uh, so right now uh, that's it and, and thank you everyone for watching thank you Ed Mato for asking these very important questions and uh, please like subscribe if you are watching and have an awesome day. Bye-bye.